Okay, welcome to the Hampton Beach Village District Monthly Meeting. It's Wednesday, August 10th, 2016. Can we all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I want to take a moment of silence for a couple of people in uh, the village district that have passed away. Uh, Elizabeth Morrow, uh, known as the uh, shooting gallery lady, she was uh, much much admired on Hampton Beach, and um, Ada, who ran the Dolphin Motel for many many years. So take this moment of silence. Thank you. So we're going to talk a little, old, we're starting with some old business. We have um, Greg Grady wanted to give us a little overview and go over what we talked about before. Hi, Barbara. 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 <laughs> <laughs> you want to get up and sure. give us a, a little bit of what's happening? Greg Grady, uh, 120 Kings Highway, um, Professional Sculptures, LLC. Um, just a little bit of uh, review of this year here. I thought we had an absolutely phenomenal year. Um, we had a little bit of a glitch um, um, with some media. Um, and, and I did, uh, we had a little bit of a meeting uh, earlier. And, and it was me that called the uh, uh, media to get them down here. Um, and I thought all in all that uh, everything went really, really well except for uh, the vandalism that we had had. Um, in our meeting, I think it was uh, March, we had discussed uh, several ways to combat that. And, and I don't think that there's anything that we could have done that would have stopped that particular person from doing what they did. Um, if there was, if, uh, um, so, so anyway, we haven't had anything in years. I don't think we should change anything immediately uh, or, or moving forward with the actual event. Um, one of the things that we had talked about before was standing back a little bit uh, with the volunteers. Um, we had a little bit of an issue replacing Kimberoni this year. I think if we move forward and, and find the right person for that, and, and again, uh, stand back a little bit and let the things police themselves, um, that's the way to go with next year. Uh, one of the things we had talked about was possibly getting uniform security, um, and, and it's at David Gooch. Uh, I don't know how he does it. I personally wouldn't do it. I looked into uh, uniform security. They get uh, 2250 per hour. I wouldn't do it for 2250 per hour. Uh, I think we have Dave do it for 10 or $12, $10 an hour, um, and, and he's out there all night. And, and David, uh, he wasn't even there when it happened. It was somebody that we had hired uh, that came in. We had a bad apple. He wasn't there. He took off. Something happened. But even, even if he was there, I think something would have happened anyway. You know, so, but anyway, all that being said, I thought it was a phenomenal year. Um, um, uh, I had nothing but uh, good, good reviews from everywhere. Uh, we had uh, NH Chronicle come in. Uh, we did, uh, did a whole week with NH Chronicle, and that'll be airing. Uh, we were on uh, uh, AAA Rhode Island, had this as a destination location for all their uh, roadmaps that they sent out. And there was a lot, a lot of free PR out there. Um, and never mind the vandalism, and that went uh, that went almost international with that. So um, anyway, that being said, um, uh, I was in here in February, and I proposed for the 2016 uh, year, and I wanted a 10 percent increase. Uh, we had talked about it, and and uh, I said to secure it and move forward, so I can uh, move forward getting a sponsorship and an early date and, and, and uh, be able to promise them that there will be an event to do a three-year contract. Uh, the three-year contract um, I had put in uh, would have been three and a half. I asked for 4%, 12% over the three years, and we agreed um, that we would decide uh, in August here on a three and a half percent increase for the three-year contract. And that's what I'm here for, is to find out if you want to go ahead and do that so I can start going after the sponsorship for this year, or if you just want me to hold off and do nothing. Um, the, do you want the cost that for the 3.5%? I think, uh, I think we, we already have that. I think 
Yeah, we, we have them. So, um, the question being is we did lose a big sponsor this year because of the time frame? Correct. Right. And uh, that was Geico. Correct. And you think that if we are early enough, we can get them back? When I talked to them uh, this year, when I spoke to them in uh, January, they told me to get back to them in August. So, um, they, you know, and, and I'm not saying that they're going to come on board this year, but uh, this is when they wanted me to get back to them for next year. Um, most all of your uh, major entities want you to contact them by October, November, December, nothing gets it. December and January, nothing happens. And then all of a sudden it's a mad rush in March. And, and, you, and, and, and I feel we got 26.5 for uh, sponsorship this year. Um, and, and I really feel we were lucky to get that. Um, a couple of people I, I, who I didn't think were going to be in came back in, um, and, and I didn't know that until I think it was April. So um, if I can start, or anybody who's going to do it, um, it should start now so that we can uh, do it. So if we give a contract and then the voters vote it down the whole of the budget in March, then what happens to uh, the contract? So. Well, I would, I, you would probably have to, uh, I don't know, that would be up for the lawyers to decide. Um, Bob, what, what would you say would happen with that? Myself, personally, I would I say... I would say any agreement would have to be subject to the voter approval at the annual March meeting to be valid. So it's almost like no contract, so I'm saying... No, it's, you an, know. it's an option to so, complete so, a contract. It, if so, if I go out and reach out to Geico, and we sign them up saying that there's going to be ten world class sculptors here, in in June, and they vote it down, um, we don't do it, and then who's liable for that? You know, so you know if, if there's so, it, it, so it's just going to create contract, somewhere you're going to have to put a little writing. I'm liable. <laughs> No, that, you yes. know, that, no, you know, that subject this, to this is subject to with the uh, Geico contract, subject subject with to everyone, approval, I would say, with everyone because yeah. we can't guarantee that it'll you know, fine print or you know, somewhere a little. Yeah, uh, you know. Um, Can I say something, sure. here, please? Um, being on the budget committee, and you can probably back me up on this as well. And Bob, we had the M, uh, the New Hampshire. Municipal, Municipal Association. Association in, was it April? May, yeah. April, May. And this came up. And the governing body can't sign a contract, according to what they said. The legislative body has to do contracts like that. Yeah, yeah. That was my understanding. Yeah. So the thing is, Greg, mm -hmm. is that I understand exactly what you're saying because a big company like Geico is doing their budget now mm -hmm. for next year. And they're going to have it all done by September. That's how it works in corporations. Right. But only the legislative body, can, it, you, it has to be voted at the, at the annual meeting to do a contract. The governing body can't. So our contract, though, is with him, so that's, not with Geico. That's just what so his contract with Geico is um, the, the subject to him. Not to us. No. I just wanted to throw that so out. So that's why you would have to have something in fine print somewhere saying. I, I really don't feel comfortable doing that. So I, I, I guess the answer to that would be no. You know, because uh, I just, you know, if 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 I'm going to guarantee somebody with saying that I'm going to be doing an event here, you people have to guarantee me that I'm going to be doing the event or the event's going to happen. I mean, yeah. that's that's bottom line. That's uh, to me is shady business, and it's not the way I do it. No, I, it, I understand you know. that. It's so we, if we're the, stuck if, to if, a March if, meeting. Right. If they're, you know, so um, if they were to vote out the event, um, it was my understanding. I had had the discussion at one time with one of the commissions. I've been doing this for 18 years now with you folks. Um, and they said that for one year, we'd, we would be able to put the event on if that should happen. And, and they would be able to get the funds for one year. I, I don't remember who it was. I can sit there and look through all the meetings and minutes and everything, but um, there was at one time somebody did tell me that. Um, and, and I would only be going after the sculpt, the sponsors. Actually, I would like to go after them for two years. Maybe I could offer them a better deal. That was one of the things I was thinking about doing with the two-year contract. But um, that being said, I'll, I'll only do it for one year. 
But I, I don't even know if, if, if that's going to be the way it's going to be. I'll wait until March to go after the sponsorship. You know, um, John, do you know? In regards to contract for a year, if it's... The, um, we, do have a sp uh, we do have something that's, that will allow us to continue for at least one year, somewhere along. Didn't, didn't they have the same thing happen with the fireworks? And, and I, I had thought at one point, one, one point it was, might have been the fireworks where the contract went out and they had to pay, uh, not they, but you folks had to pay the, the contract and the voters had voted it out or it wasn't in the budget. I don't remember exactly what it was. but well, it hasn't happened since I We was. had a contract with the firework company, but they understand that if the budget gets shot down, that the contract's void. You know, I really don't think it's going to be an issue. Um, I don't you know, know, so if I go to Geico and I say, "Hey, we're not here," they, you know, they're going to—they'll never come back. You know, I realize that, but um, and I'm sure. You know, if I if I write something up, I'll I'll, I'll make issue. I, I don't think, you know, if I was a sponsor paying ten thousand dollars to come in into an event and they heard from uh, the guy selling the salesperson selling it to him, it might not happen. <laughs> You know, we, you know. Well, let us know when you know. Would be my answer to it. You know, so I, I don't know. You know, I, I don't know. Um, I know that I try to. I put my heart and soul into this thing here. I keep the cost down as much as possible. If you if you want me to do it, this is what I'm going to charge. Right. You know, there's and 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 if you want to cut down the costs on it, then you have to cut down the event in some way, shape, or form. Uh, by by cutting down the number of sculptors, that it, it's not going to really decrease the actual cost of the event that much, um, because you still have all the players in there. You still have you know all the truckers coming in, all the security. You know everything is going to happen. Well, I'm I'm happy with the event as it's been run. So other than a couple of glitches, I think it's I I would I'm I'm comfortable making a contract. You can you can make a motion and approve the three and a half percent. Right. You can do that. Yes. Well, it's a three-year contract, so this is adding the two next two years. I'm comfortable with that because we've been <coughs> doing it for 18 years, and it, and it's nice to have a set figures and know where we're going. So. Um, so you're not putting the limitation and be subject to the legislative body of vote of approval. I don't. Um, you notice how they have warrant articles. Uh, they do a three-year pay raise for the union. They put it in as a warrant article for that reason, right. so the legislative body can approve it. I'm, this is what we were told. You were there, Bob. Yep. You were there, Regina. So I'm just repeating what they told us. So. Why don't we give the contract for a year? Well, you could put an article and, in and, and then put, put, it put the article three. in for the remainder. Right. You can put it as a warrant article, and the voters will decide. That way, he has his time. I, I think have it's a, important for Greg to be able to go out and sell this all year. Yeah. If he's at an event in September in Myrtle Beach, and he says, "Hey, I got an event in uh, Hampton. Do you want to be part of that?" He can talk to those people down there. The year, the year that we got thirty-eight or thirty-nine thousand for for sponsorship, I was selling, selling, selling all year round. You know, and and I was sticking my neck out there. And I, I didn't feel comfortable doing that, not knowing if we were going to have the event. And, and that's where I sit right now, you know. So if you're telling me that, it, you know, it may not happen, I just don't feel comfortable doing that. We'll you, know, I, I, it, you know, I don't make that much money. I know I you, mean, the you chances folks, of it not happening, I think, are pretty slim. All right. I agree. I mean, it was a huge success. I had nothing but good feedback last year. Um, you know, this year. And I, got, I, I mean, and I talked so, to everybody on the beach, and everybody seemed yeah. thrilled. We, we had, uh, on Facebook, I had 400,000 hits on one post. You know, for, over 400,000 hits. That's I mean, not including us. Uh, that's, not, that's not including, you know, the uh, the Hampton Beach official um, thing. And, and, and the only thing that we really had a problem with, which to me wasn't really a problem, was the volunteer issue. Um, and, and I think we can either just find the right person or, or and I thought he was the right person. It just, we, we, we didn't uh, move forward with it soon enough. Um, and if we got it out, everything is, is on the, uh, 
uh, social media now, get it out there and, 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 and put it out, I think it would it won't be a problem. And, you know, so, I have anyway. To, I have to say, Greg, that you've been doing this for uh, a number of years, and it's this year we had a couple of little glitches, so we just tweak it, we fix it. You know, we, this, this has worked before. Yeah, okay. Every year we yeah, have a little here, something. Here. You know, it's so. worked in the past. Yeah. We just need to tweak and get the right people to do the job. As long as we stay within the parameters of the RSAs for the state of New Hampshire, and what Chuck is proposing is something we can do, can you live with his proposal? Commit to this year and put the two additional years. You know, every, every year, every year I've been waiting until March. You know, like I, I, I invite all the sculptors in every, you know. So I, I wanted to maybe feel a little bit more comfortable. But we're doing that now. Yeah, right. And so, and, yeah. and if that's this the way a, to do it, I'm, this I'm is not, a legal right. solution to a dilemma we have. Okay, and, and if and if you feel comfortable with it, and you're telling me I should, then I will. Yeah, Real well, simple. We, I don't what feel would comfortable the, with you. What would the Warren article be saying? It would say to approve um, a, a multi-year contract. Right, exactly. At 3% each yeah, year. With the specified okay. amounts. With right. the money Can I make a suggestion then? And so why don't we go with the figure for the 3.5% for this year and then do a three-year contract in the Warren article so that, and then I can sit down and review. Wouldn't that be the, yep, the smarter perfect. thing to do? And then we won't have to do it for three years instead of if we do it now, we'll be doing it again next year or the yep. year after? I would say before we post and create the Warren articles, you should make a submission of exactly what it is you want. Right. Because that would have to be specified in the Warren article. It cannot be kind of a ballpark here. Mm -hmm. All right. So I make a motion to next year add, what's the figure? The figure has it under things. 78. 77, 6, 63, 81. 7, 7. 6, 63, 81. Okay, that's, that's my motion. So that's the three and a half percent over the seventy-five thousand thirty-seven and fifty. Okay. I have a second. All in favor? No. All in favor? All right. Excellent. I do have a this curious issue didn't ruin the event, but it bothers me. It happened, and we've got to drill down a little bit and to lessen the likelihood of it happening again. Fortunately, it happened in the third week, but it happened in the first week. School's out for everything. Mm. Um, and you said you, that the rate for professional security would be 22 bucks an hour, correct? I called around. I got different prices from $19 an hour to $22.50, depending on how many hours that we get. So them. my thought would be, is there any reasonableness in saying you can staff it adequately the first week, the week they're doing it? The second week is vulnerable, and professional security during the second week is something I would at least like to think about. Talk during the second week? Yeah. What about the third week? The third week, the third week is less important than the second week <coughs> keeping the integrity of the. The, the dates that are really important are the competition dates. If we were to have some vandalism at, during the actual competition, the competitors wouldn't be able to make up the time or it yeah, just wouldn't right, be a fair just, thing. In effect, so those, those two days, well, for, for the two days during the competition, and the other uh, time that I really see a need for uniform security would be 4th of July. So the other thing that we have to do is set the dates for next year right now and decide how long you want to keep it up. I mean, you know, so one of the, one of the things that we could do, uh, you, you could do, is, uh, you know, I, I'd handle the whole thing the way I used to do it and just come in for the week and then take it down and be gone. We wanted to, the, the, the precinct took over the responsibility for the security right. end of it for extending it, you know, well, so. We spend so much money on it that we want to get our bang for our buck. Yeah, right, do. right, and, and I agree. Can I ask a question about this? Um, it, it's 21 days approximately, right, or three weeks? It's more than I, I think it's even longer. It depends on where we start. So we have to we have to look at we have to decide the dates for next year. You, you looking at a calendar check? Or? Yeah, I mean, like if I you put go by last go, year. It's let let the me just give this to find me. Twenty one days at nine hours a day for security, approximately, or is it eight? How many hours? Can we go for well, you got ten hours. Ten dollars. I uh, that's not. Drops hand on the. 
Let me start again. Okay. 21 okay. days okay. at nine hours a day is 189 hours, right? So let's round it off to 20 bucks an hour. That's $3,780. How much money did we spend on security this year? Okay, we budgeted thirty-five hundred dollars. We spent twenty-seven hundred. Okay, okay, so basically, you're talking about another thousand dollars to have a professional group of people come in for yeah, three we, weeks. We pay the we pay the folks that we had ten bucks an hour. So you're just doubling the figure. So if instead of if we budgeted instead of thirty-five hundred, seven thousand, you'd have a uniformed guard on duty the whole time. I don't know where you're we getting won't, I, I, I've He's got a, thinking we only need a uniform person at night. I've that's got, what no, I'm no, 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 that's, no, 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 I'm only talking about from 9 a.m., 9 a.m. to 6 a.m. No, 9 I've p.m. Got a, I, I to have 1 a.m. to 9, 9 p.m. to 6 a.m. Right. Okay, that's the normal. Yeah. And we, as I said, we budgeted 35. We only spent 26, uh, 2,700, but don't forget. We didn't have coverage towards the end. It was kind of spotty, and That's I, right. so I didn't end up paying some of these people. How many people did we have? Did we pay for security this year? Six. Six. David was Six. the made. He was the majority, but then there were all these others that uh, that come and go ones. Come and go. Yeah. That, that happens every year when we're doing paid labor. You know, we we can call labor ready and have them come in. For, you know. Uh, security people. There's a, there's a number of different things we can do. Alan, anyway, here, here is a, a quote from we Advanced Security, um, and they gave me a quote from June 16th through July 5th, which would be 20 nights, um, and, and we would need them before that. I just gave them this just for, to get something going, so that's 20 nights, and we would be in the week before, I think it would be the, uh, um, so that would be six nights before um, so it'd be 26 nights. This is at $19 an hour. You know, that's not even double what we're paying now. Right. And, and, and the thing is, the thing is, I just want to add one thing. I also. think I already made that point. No, no, you told me it was I want to add, I want to add one more thing, Maureen. Uh -huh. Every year, every year when I go to the accountant to yeah. prepare for the audit, the accountant always says to me every year, you people should hire professional security because you're putting yourself in a big liability. Mm -hmm. So every year he tells me that, and I say, well, they don't want to, but just I want to throw that out there too. Okay. All right. Let's work on that over the winter. All right. That's it, I guess. Any other questions? Anybody in the audience have any questions? Did, did you just pick a date? For oh, we have the dates we're looking oh, yeah. at. So you think in the ninth to drop the sand? Well, um, the fifteenth, the sixteenth, and that's I meant the fifteenth. The fifteenth, sixteenth, and seventeenth, I think, would be the smartest idea to get the best bang for your buck to get people in early. Exactly. So that would be Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So we would be dropping the sand the Friday before the fifteenth. On the ninth. Ninth. Is that the ninth Friday early? early? No, usually. That's we did. We Pretty dropped early. the sand on the tenth this year. Yeah. So it's, oh, okay. Well, just seems early. Okay, so just June seems to scale up earlier and earlier in this. Case. No, no, you're only about how long would it be? How long would it be up then if we did the ninth? When would it come down? When, they, when would they take? Well, the and and we. We have been taking it over uh, down after July 5th, so it would be down July 6th, 7th. July 5th is uh, oh, July Wednesday. 4th is on a Tuesday this year, I believe. Yeah. Okay. So we'd have to take it down Wednesday, Thursday. Yeah. We we had in the past left it up until oh, July 8th and 9th. This is, the other thing you could do, and I would suggest, is is to try to steer away from the security end of it and just let it be you know we had talked about putting construction fence around it the cost of uh, uh, construction fence in, in anybody that's going to want to get in there they're going to get in no matter There's what no you put out the you know we we had anyway so the construction fence is five dollars a foot there's about 500 feet that's twenty five hundred dollars one time fee twenty five hundred dollars uh, we still do the volunteers on a stand-back basis. They don't have to be there. It's not a big deal. We have a fence around it, you know. 
uh, and, and just and, and just let it be. That's what other events do. They leave it up until it falls down, and, and people are saying, get it out of there. It looks horrible. And then you take it down. I mean... <laughs> Yeah, but if you put a construction fence around the perimeter, they're still going to just jump over the, the fence that's right there. Oh, you know, they, they're, doing, they're doing construction <laughs> down here with, you know, all these buildings, and they put the fence around it. People aren't jumping in there doing everything. Like that. Maybe they are. They uh, are you gonna put someone the fence, did. Are you going to put the fence in front of the railing? I, I would. We're close enough up to the railing where we wouldn't have to do that. We could. That was one I mean, of the If I was going to get in there, I'd just jump over the railing. Yeah. I mean, uh, other events, they take... They, Right, so you just, anyway, I mean, so there's an option. So, so there's options. So the culprit is now. <laughs> yeah. If so somebody wants to do something, they're going to do it. The night. The night. So they do the pound down and everything like that, what, the 14th, 13th, 14th, is that what you're saying? And then the 15th, 15th, 16th, and 17th is going to be the actual competition. So when they do the middle one, the advertisers. The 9th we drop the sand, on the 10th we'd be doing the pound up for the demo site, and then the So we're up to a 11th. month. I hear it a month, right? It's up to a month. Right. Seems like it's just early. I don't know. It's, it's, it's what we did last year. It's what we had been doing. This year. Uh, this year, yeah. Okay, so whatever. It definitely brought a lot of people early. It did. We're fortunate did. for the weather, though. I mean, it's all weather. Yeah. You don't know in June. It's all weather related, yeah. really. But uh, think about it. it was nice to see the people that early. And I can say that on July 4th, because I nobody wants to volunteer, so I volunteer in the afternoon. And the people that come, they're just as thrilled as they were uh, people that came the first day. You know, they're still thrilled. There's so many people on July 4th, and they always comment, oh, this is lovely. So, But you absolutely need security on July 4th to uh, well, numbers of people. Okay. I, would, I would do, you know, even if we mix it up a little bit, add the regular security. And, and what we had done last year, what we do do, is on July 4th, we hire, uh, we bring in two people for security. You know, Dave brings in another person. I don't know if, what, what he put in for hours. But, I mean, why not bring in David and a uniform security for those particular nights? You know? Can, um, we can, we've got time we to think drill about down more on this. Right. You, this doesn't really have to be solved. Yet. No, I, no. no. This but is it solved. should be put in the mix to be looked at. Sure. Yeah. If you want, I can give you the contract and that's exactly what I've written up here. I'm not quite clear on this relationship that we have with the sponsors. You know, this whole thing about Geico. Explain to me how this operates now. So we have a figure of the cost of the uh, cost of the event is seventy seven thousand dollars. Sponsors come in different ways. Some sponsors come in in kind for different things. Are you saying a sponsor approaches us and says, I'll, give, I'll contribute X amount of dollars yeah. to your event in return for you putting up an advertisement for my company? An advertisement, and then they have a little display or something on, on the weekend of the uh, competition. All right, and then some of them, I have that list. Uh, we got... This, it, it, well, we then, got eight thousand dollars from Plymouth this, Rock. We where got, does this come in? Where we it's necessary to have us have a contract with a sponsor? We don't have a contract with a sponsor. He does. Well, again, why is that necessary? Because to tell they, them that they we're have, going to be having an event. They have to commit the money. So, like Plymouth Rock Assurance gave us eight thousand. McDonald's gave us eight thousand. Coca Cola gave us a thousand plus product, right? Okay. So, waters and stuff like that. Uh, Blinks was 2000 Trusted Choice, 2500 Main Salmon Hotel, 2500 The Old Salt, 2500 And then there was a bunch of uh, people that sponsored by meals Trade. and trades and stuff like that. Right, so so, that, com so this, that money comes off, comes in as income to the village district. So you as... Yeah. So when, when I go... See, as a contract with... When a, when a major corporation is doing their budget for the next year, right. you know, they, they, they're, they're taking so much money and they're saying, say we're going to Hampton and I'm signing a contract that we're going to be bringing them in. Right. You know, so... Um, um, and, and, and I'm offering a major sponsor, $10,000, has a booth down at the, okay. the event. The gold... The, <laughs> I do, I want this amendment. Yeah, we can do that. Um, gold sponsors, the platinum sponsors have a booth the gold ones don't. They get their logo in there. There's, there's a lot of different things that we can do with sponsorship. 
but I'm limited to the area that we have in him. I can only bring in three. I squeeze in four platinum sponsors one year. So, but if, anyway. if the budget does not, doesn't get approved, where is the loss for GEICO? They, they just won't give us the money, right? But you've already got expenses up front, too, in promoting and advertising. You can't that off. So if I go, if I go commits, it, it's if I go uh, to me, it's it, if I go. I appreciate all the gold sponsors that want to come in, but if uh, if I went to the main sale and I went, we're not having an event this year. I don't need your money. They're going to say, well, they're going to be disappointed and maybe not come back next year. But they're not going to make a big stink about it. I don't think a major corporation where I'm going after ten thousand dollars for a sponsor is going to. I mean, it, it's a lot of work, and the contracts have to be signed. We have to guarantee everything. You know, beforehand, you know, and, and, and so they're going to make us think about it. You know, they little all the lawyers were. Okay, Greg, do you have another one of these for me? No. Okay, I'll make it. Okay. Thank you. But it, right. What is the maximum potential sponsorship? Do you have an idea? I, I think, you know, if we get four, if, if everyone paid the max and they would, I could get four sponsors in there at 10000 would be $40,000. And, and then maybe, you know, um, eight to nine gold at 2500 or $2,000. But um, so I sort of grandfathered some of the people in. They were like McDonald's was in here at 5000 and, and I've been slowly increasing each of these. So, um, we don't if, if we if, if if we were to ever see fifty thousand dollars, I would be ecstatic. You know, I was ecstatic at thirty eight. <laughs> Twenty six, I was happy at this year. I only thought we were going to get eighteen, nineteen. We used to bring in six, eight, twelve, fourteen. But what, you're saying this year's problem really was guy, correct? For the revenue reduction in sponsors. Well, they were one of it, but I, I didn't go after any other sponsors until April, March. You know, I, we got approved in March. But in the you did that the year before, though, didn't you? No, the year, that's what I was saying. The year he before, I stuck my nose out. out, and I went out after everybody just to, to show you what we could do, you know. And then, and then I came in the next year and said, let's have a contract. And here I am now. You know, it just seems the... We, the sponsorship tailed off significantly this year, so it has to be addressed in some form. It's, that's why I'm here now, so we can go after the sponsorship. Excellent. Thanks, Greg. Thank you. Short meeting. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Greg. Thank you. All right. Do you have any other old business? <laughs> any other old business? Uh, what? Any other old business? No. Okay. Right. Thank you. New business. So do you want to get up and talk about the children? We, the two of you? You and Julie? We'd love right. to. Let's get one of our favorite events of the summer. We're with the sponsor. We're the sponsor of the of the Hampton Chamber of Commerce. Good ones at that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That won't fit me. Everybody gets one. one. Yes. Thank you so much. I'm doing the minutes here, Mr. Do you want me to start? We're just here to acknowledge the support of the Hampton Beach Village District for this wonderful week-long event that wouldn't be possible without your support. Um, the presenting sponsor again this year is the Hampton Beach Casino. Uh, and they're a perfect fit for the event because they're just across the street and it's all about children over there. And Maureen Ailes every day comes over with staff from the casino uh, and they do free raffles. Uh, on, so that's something that it breaks up all the performances. So we really enjoy that. And we want to thank the many sponsors 
and the donations we get from chamber members and from local businesses, their donations help us to give out prizes for the costume parade and other activities. And uh, we also wanted to acknowledge Seacoast Scene. For the last two weeks, they've had a full page of our program for the week. Nice. And also this week, they had an article about the uh, Children's Festival. They interviewed John Kane. It was a really good article. So we want to acknowledge and thank them and thank you for all your support. Could, could you please, um, just so for the people at home, could you please introduce yourself? Oh, you? yes. I'm Cheryl Ailes, assistant to the president of the chamber, Doc Noel, and I'm co-chairman with Julie Leonard of the Children's Festival. Also, we wanted to mention that for anyone watching, if they would like to be a part of the Children's Parade, we just bought a sample of two of the costumes. Now, here again, we have almost 100 costumes uh, which have been donated, and they will be down there at 9.30 in the morning for any child Friday morning that wants to have a costume and be in the costume parade. They're all brand new. <laughs> you get to keep them after the parade. You get to be judged. And our senior judge is Maureen. And they take care of judging everyone. And we have a wonderful time during the parade. Also, we want to make sure that all the residents of Hampton know that they, we certainly would love them down here not only Friday, but any one of the five days or all of the five days. Also, once again this year, the Village District has been kind enough to uh, sponsor a fabulous coloring book for every child, and we did pass them out tonight. And um, Buddha also donated crayons, and she and Chuck has done that in prior years. And we also have the bags. And every child, besides Friday, every child in the parade receives a prize. Beside that, every child receives a coloring book with crayons. I mean, it's a fabulous coloring book. Uh, we have given some out this year to people who have come to Hampton Beach, not only from different states, but from foreign countries. And people say this brings them back to their childhood. You know, you see the playground and so many things that have never changed. It's beautifully done. It was done by a graphic artist who used to be Ted the Cat. Um, I Denise don't recall. Brown. Denise Brown. Denise Brown. And she has done a fabulous job. And really, as you look through it, it's going to bring back some very many happy memories of... Uh, days when we were all that age. So we'd like to certainly make sure that everyone knows they're invited. Uh, we start at 10 o'clock every morning and activities go through till almost 4 o'clock in the afternoon. And we have free ice cream with Ronald McDonald on Wednesday. And just a, an array of uh, events that go on. Uh, which the logistics can be difficult in. Is that on the, the website of what the events and stuff yes, like that? Yes, yes, it is. We also have posters that we've Are these available out. in the Chamber of Commerce? Yes, they are. This is a list of all of the activities that go on for the entire week that you can pick up from the Chamber of Commerce. They also, on our calendar of events, on page 33, uh, all that is listed as well, Maureen. Okay. So does anyone have any questions of Cheryl and I? Oh. I'm going to make a comment. Uh, so, the, so everybody realizes that I want to give a kudos to Cheryl and to Julie. Uh, they do an outstanding job. And I want you folks to know that many, many additional hours they put in on their own. I mean that sincerely. So it's something that I want to give them a lot of credit. I mean, and they take it to heart. They really do a, a wonderful job. And of A question is have you reached out to the, the rec department at all about yes. them bringing some of the kids down uh, well, we did that for that it's their week. camp week yeah so but diane is coming uh, i think it's tuesday afternoon to to mc the talent show yeah 
I, as she did last year. And if she can't make it because of the camp, we can We're uh, gonna do figure it, it. All right, nice. <laughs> we'll figure it out. But I, you know, we do put in a lot of hours and do effort. We However, job. we do enjoy it. It's fun. <laughs> we do have a wonderful time. Yeah. Also, we have the community has been wonderful, as they always are. I mean, we have wonderful, wonderful, wonderful prizes for all children. And uh, we're going to be giving some during the week as well this year. And uh, we're really looking forward to that week. Not saying that we're not very tired when it's over with, but... <laughs> so let's, really get, let's reiterate, you, it begins, Children's Week Children's Week begins on Monday. What's yes. the date? The 15th. 15th with B.J. Hickman, who's all been dead okay, forever. The, on Monday the 15th it begins. Yeah and goes until the Friday, and when the people want to come down to get costumes and line up for the parade, they go to the State Park. That is yeah. What time do they have to be at the State Park? 10-15. Um, 10, 10, 15. 10, 15, 10 15 and then they line up and get a costume if they don't have one. Right. Mm -hmm. And then the parade begins at, what, 11? What at 11, promptly. Okay, promptly. Okay. And the Continentals will be on the wagon? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. They will be on, on the wagon. wagon. On the wagon. <laughs> That's a literal statement. We think. <laughs> and they've no, asked they for me it. not to drive them. <laughs> yes, <laughs> the parade. Did you get anyone from Miss Hanson H? Yes. Yes, we did. Yeah, we Absolutely have. We have a we have somebody and a backup. All right. Thank you for asking. Yeah. Yeah. And I noticed that you have two new bicycles. Yes, we do. They're lovely. They really are. Anyone that would like to see them, please stop by the chamber. We have them out for uh, every wood's display, and they really show that a great job picking out those bikes. Well, you know, since Karen from Morelli's is here tonight, I sh we should probably mention that every year she Morelli's Market donates a gift basket, and oh. each year it's really very charming. This year it has a whale on it, you know, oh, nice. and it's, we do a free raffle. We keep it on display in the beach office we all week, and then it's a free <laughs> raffle. And there's no, no, there's lots of candy, but no nuts or chocolate, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you, Karen. Thank you. Thanks, Karen. Thank you, Thank you for ladies. coming in. Thank you. Awesome. You guys want to get up and give us a talk? Great. Thank you. Hi. My name is Cheryl Lassiter, and um, do we have to give our addresses at this meeting? No. That's not no. Okay. Uh, I am an author of uh, several books of local Hampton history, and I also write a column in the Hampton Union History Matters, again, local history. Um, Karen, my cohort. <laughs> I'm Karen Raines, and I live at 467 Lafayette Road in Hampton, and I am a writer too, but mostly when I have a good editor with me, which is Cheryl. And one thing that we have put together, which is going to be happening on, um, Cheryl, you want to say the date? Thursday, August 18th at 6.30 p.m. We, are, we put together this documentary video of the first 100 years, 1915 to 2015, of the Queens of the Carnival Contest and Miss Hampton Beach pageants. And that will be at uh, St. James Masonic Lodge in, at 77 Tide Mill Road, if anybody doesn't know, in Hampton. At 6.30. At 6.30. And so we welcome the community to come, and it's going to be very interesting. So um, there's, 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 there's no charge. No, it's free. It's sponsored by the Hampton Historical Society, of which I am a member, and Karen is a trustee. And so always their, their programs wonder, are free of charge. I wonder if um, after you have your original showing, if perhaps Channel 22 mm -hmm. might like to show that as well, because I know that they did a couple of things before that were very, very interesting about, uh, it was from the Historical Society, it was about haying, the, the marshes, and, and the all marsh, of that. Yeah. There was, and the fishing. Probably Joshua's, yeah, the fishing. Yeah, was yeah, really Joshua's videos. Yeah. 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 Excellent stuff. Yeah, yeah, they are. And this one is its first showing, everybody, so, you know. And we'll yeah. also have we'll do more what, you won't, what you won't get at, at uh, a Channel 2 uh, Showing is we're going to have oh six or ten um, six at least six at least Ms. six Hampton Miss Hampton Beaches from the past yep 
1975, you know. 64, 1964, Sheila Scott yeah. will be there. So that's going to be cool mm -hmm. in itself, just to have a land shot. Yep. And some memorabilia from some of the former queens will yeah. also have that out there. And if you're going to come, get there early. There's 120 spaces at this, this event, this, um, you know, place. So please come early if you're going to come. Yep. Right. And we welcome you. Do, can you share with us just a little bit of how you produced it? Oh, I'd love to. Um, <laughs> The Hampton Historical Society has this wonderful collection of photographs and memorabilia, documents, records from both of these two very, what we found out, didn't know before, very lovely, wonderful beach traditions. Um, and we both work on the program committee at the Historical Society, so we're looking at all of this stuff, and a lot of it we got from the Chamber of Commerce, too, by the way, some of the um, later things. And we said, boy, we need to do something with this. We really wanted to package it and put it all together. And so there was a lot of research. It took us 10 months to do 100 years in a, to put it all into a one-hour program. Um, a lot of research in the old newspapers. Not just in Hampton, but Portsmouth, Haverhill, because a lot of the queens came from Merrimack Valley uh, sites of Manchester. Uh, I think I even found something in the Vancouver, British Columbia Sun, believe it or not. Uh. Springfield, Mass. So we were doing a lot of research, um, all the different resources. One thing that we did find, we had a lot of holes in our Queens of the Carnival, because of course they started in 1915 and went to the last queen of the carnival was in 1940. And we didn't have a lot of photographs of these ladies, and we were able to get most of them. Wow. We have probably about 10 altogether that we still need photographs for. So we're hoping with this program, we've already raised some awareness with a lot of the folks in town, some of them in their 80s, their grandmothers were queens, and they sort of came out of the closet with their <laughs> photographs and uh, that was just wonderful. This man over here, he don't, he um, let us have a lot of his photographs which are really beautiful with some of the more recent queens but they're... Are you John? John Payne. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, and thank you very much. Yes. yes, John's photographs really yeah, I have added a question. To if this goes over well, yes. is there something we could do on the stage at the beach and, and run it again? We have you know, a huge screen. How long? 45 about. minutes. Because yeah. this would be nice to do maybe on a Labor Day or something during the day. I would have to ask a question about that. Does the, whoever owns, the, I guess it would be the state, they need to have um, like a, a, BMI, a license from BMI um, for the music because we use a lot of, as our background music, we use a lot of copyrighted music. But I think we're okay. We'll never sell this. And we will never charge admission for it. So it's, and it's all very educational. Right. So we feel like we're okay uh, because we're under the fair use. Oh. So Glenn has to deal with that, I believe, right? Mm -hmm. The situation with the music, you're right. Uh, ASCAP, BMI, uh, and there are two others. However, uh, there was a new law passed, what, maybe 10 years ago, that anything under a, uh, under a government agency like the Village District, there's... No if they sponsor it, then yeah. is that what you're saying? Oh, hmm. well, that's good news. Yeah. So yes, the answer is yes. Because I think it would be, uh, in, in, in my uh, situation, I can't really leave the beach that often. Mm -hmm. yeah. So for me to go on uh, August 18th, if it was November 18th, I could definitely go. But you know, it's something that it will be on view at the museum too. Which after would be great. This event. So, but I think yeah. um, the people that come to the beach, and, and I think I Labor Day it. itself. It doesn't have to be this year, Labor Day. We could maybe set it up for next year or Memorial Day or something. We have a beautiful screen um, that would fit on the stage, right? It's one of the reasons why we wanted to make well, it a video. What about the old screen that we had? Can we use that? Well, we can figure something out. Yeah, I'm sure we can. You got a sheet? <laughs> It'll work. It's one of the reasons why we wanted to make it a video, well, it it a really video was so that we could ha preserve it for years and years. You know what? It would be years. a really nice thing to do, too. It would be to play it just before Miss Hampton Beach yes. comes yes. on. Yes, it would be nice. Yes. Yeah, I like that even yeah, better. I like that even better, too. Um, yes. Cheryl, this is the first time she ever went to Miss Hampton Beach this year, and she also was a judge for the Little Miss Hampton Beach. I was. Beaches oh, and stuff. I was. 
So yeah, it was a lot of fun. What I enjoyed I, myself. Hopefully this will bring some, um, you know, people will want to come see Miss Hampton Beach. It's an amazing event, you know, and Stephanie Lucier has been doing it for the last 20 years, and the chamber who did it before that, um, she's been great, too. She's been great, so. We thought we would spend a few weeks going combing through articles and sort of gathering this together. And I said it took us 10 months, and, and we worked on this like full-time jobs. Um, and there's there, still more it's, to get it's the, And Well, we're yeah. considering doing a book because there's so much, only so much, obviously, you can put in 45-minute program, but we think we've hit the highlights and um, the wonderful casino years, for example, the bandstand. Oh, yes, and um, the singing cop. The singing mm -hmm. You're Bill gonna, Elliott. You're going to hear him, yeah. you know, in this video, and like that's really a cool that was thing. another neat thing that, that we neat. discovered in the archives of the Historical Society was a recording from I think about 1980 that Bill Elliott had done of his recordings from the 1930s, and with all those beautiful scratches, and so we were able to incorporate that into the video and do a little tribute to him because he was just such an important part of the beach. So. Come and enjoy it. Glenn, I think yeah. your mug is in there a couple times, too. Yeah, your glass <laughs> mug is in there here. <laughs> if we could produce something down here at the show, would it be possible to invite some of the prior winners to attend? Oh, yeah. They're That's very good. assessed. They're, yes. Yeah, you can get a hold of them very easily. A lot of them, like I said, did want to come, have mm -hmm. other things happening in their lives, but we do have at least six or seven that will be there mm -hmm. right. for this event. And then... From uh, ladies who have passed on, the queens of the carnival, uh, we have several of their granddaughters coming that are in their 80s. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. it'll be a great night. And yes. one that um, actually was, she's the granddaughter of Clara Dudley, who's the wife of Joe Dudley. And um, her daughters, she was a queen in 1916. Her daughters were queens in 1924. And 19. 30 something, I can't remember. But then the granddaughter was a uh, contestant in Miss Hampton Beach in 1952 and 1953. So they have a very nice sort of family tradition going there. And the family, yeah. Well, and also the, her, her niece, I believe, her niece or great niece, it must be her great niece, uh, was a contestant in 2003, I want to say, and she placed third or fourth. So, yeah, just keeps on going. Oh, yeah. Anyway, thank you thank all. You very much. Much. Thank you very much for coming down. Thank you. Okay, on uh, back to more new business. Um, the DR, DRA suggested we make a couple motions. Um, one of them we've done before, so we're, we're making a new motion. So, uh, first motion is to allow the treasurer to, to submit a weekly payroll. So, um, any discussion on that, or do you want to just second it? I would move to second it. All right. All in favor? All right. The next motion is to allow the treasurer to, to pay bills, normal business policy bills, as they come in during the month with a limit of less than 10000 per check. And any discussion on that? No. All right. I have a second? Second. All in favor? <laughs> all right. Is that all we need, Stephen? Thank you very much. All right. All right. Any other new business, uh, Maureen? Um, I don't think so. I, I can't find my paper, but I have a couple of things, but I forget now. <laughs> but, I just want to talk about the, the, we are, the Children's Week is coming yeah. next week. And uh, the Hampton Talent Competition is coming at the end of the month. And we will be reviewing all of the contestants very soon. And uh, I think that's all. All right, super. Bob? I would just have a couple of comments on serendipity. Uh, this is, we invite these people here to present what they're going to present a week from now. The pageant's been going on at the beach for 100 years. Their coming here presents Chuck an opportunity to invite them to perform something at the show. And so these happen in a way that there's a little bit of serendipity. And another example of my thinking on serendipity is two years ago we started out pushing to get into the community rating system. 
preferred insurance premium discount. In the course of that time, the state forms a legislative committee to investigate sea level rise. The committee comes back with a report recommending a whole bunch of things to reduce the at-riskness. Because we had been pushing for the community rating system, much of what would be recommended in the legislative report is already in play through FEMA, because FEMA sets guidelines for the community rating system, which very much overlap with uh, the, the requirements to provide more protection for the property. It didn't start two years ago. Nobody was saying pushing for a lower insurance rates would coincidentally, two years later, come together with another piece where they are mutually beneficial to the district, in particular in the community as a whole. And I, these are just small but kind of fascinating examples of why a village district can be quite important to a community in so many different ways, and it's always evolving. Now I'll shut up. No, it was great. Yo, that and we got to thank you, Bob, That's for bringing true. all that, that forward. That was, yeah. was uh -huh. super. And I think, it's, is it September or October we're going to have Jason back? Oh, uh, Jason's going to come back in September. September. The time frame is October. I, and this, this it'll be too late by the time this is aired, but the fireworks have been canceled for tonight, and the rain date is Friday. Um, there was too many storms that might hit us, and it looked like the time frame was going to be right at set up. Uh, right now, we might get lucky and not get it, and uh, I'm sorry that we had to cancel, but we have a rain date for Friday. If we don't cancel by 1 o'clock, we can't do the rain date. So looking at all the radar and what was going on, we felt it was best to, to, uh, to wait. All right. Uh, any and we're going to save approval in minutes, I guess, because Joan's not here, right? Yeah, I... So we'll do that next month, yes. for last month's meeting. All right, and um, do we have any public comment? Yes, John. Thank you very much for having me, Commissioners. John Kane, Marketing Director, Hampton Beach Village District. Just want to let you guys know a couple things that um, have been going on. Um, we started volleyball maybe about seven or eight years ago uh, in conjunction with the town, uh, trying to get that sport because it's such a family-oriented sport uh, down in Hampton Beach. And from what I've seen by going to other beaches, I think Hampton Beach is probably the capital in New England of beach volleyball. We've got two organizations now that put on full-blown tournaments with 20 nets. Uh, Spike U, who has been doing it for maybe about three or four years, been doing it. And now we've got a new um, uh, organization, which is NEVB, which is New England Volleyball. And they are at the same level as Spike U. So we've got approximately 10 major tournaments that are happening in Hampton Beach on volleyball, and you've got to see these setups because it's it's ages of all all, all ages. Uh, you've got little girls; um, most of them are female. I'm going to say about 80 percent of them up to age 18. Uh, they come down; they're very serious about it. Um, the parents set up the 10 by 10 cent, uh, tents all around. You know, they camp out there with the kids all day long. It's a great, great family event. Um, so I'm going to encourage them next year. I'm going to support them as much as I can. But I think Hampton Beach is recognized as, like, the volleyball capital of the world. Uh, another great, the world may be huh? pushing it. Uh, another great <laughs> event. John Kane uh, said. Yep, Tom beating out. Yep, we're all over uh, Rio. Um, then the other event that we had this year that we've had in the past, but this really this year was uh, wonderfully put on. Great organization um, from the Winnick Cunning, I believe it was the Booster Club. It was beach wrestling. Yeah. And you know, I didn't know what where it was going to go. I didn't know what kind of people were going to show up. But again, everyone had some kind of training, and it was um, you know the 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 largest guy. Um, 
that won it because it went by weight categories was um, Hampton Beach Lifeguard. Um, he's got a full boat for wrestling. And it was three tournaments, and this guy just went... <laughs> And he did it to the next guy. And then for the final tournament, they said, you know, uh, Bill Jones, show up. Bill, jo Bill Jones hit the road. <laughs> um, but there were also little girls. And I'm going to say these girls were probably, you know, four years old or so. And they are in, they're wrestling not only girls, but they are wrestling their weight categories. We had, um, we had um, a college, uh, again, a uh, scholarship girl from uh, one of the local colleges, uh, she came down, and she did unbelievable. Um, then we had this little girl, and it, it was just, you know, love watching it. She had the spirit. She was in it. She, she was up. They had three matches. She was up 2-0. The um, third match came up. She got slammed, and then your heart just went out because she started crying. Uh, you know, and you're looking at, gosh, did she hurt herself? Dad comes over, gives her a big hug, you know, brushes her off. She puts on her game face, bam, winner. So it was fun. Uh, I'm hoping this expands next year. Uh, it was all surrounded by their families, the, you know, the pop-up tents. Uh, and the Winnicana Boost Club, you know, put on a great, great event. Uh, so I want to thank them for doing that. I think the McCanns from Hampton uh, were, uh, took up half the half the group of people. as a big family in there. Did they? they yeah. Great, no, it great was wrestling family. Oh, yeah. it was great. They were super. Uh, and again, family friendly uh, event that we had. The um, Children's Week. Um, I'm going to try to pull this off. Um, we have the movies on Monday night, and it's the movie is a very popular movie called Inside Out. And if it does rain, uh, I'm going to try to hold it some other day that week, probably Tuesday, so it won't interfere with people who want to go to the, um, you know, the 100 years. So I, I would like to go to the 100 year and watch that up at up, uh, the historical. So if possible, uh, we'll be, maybe I have to ask my crew. One of them is laid up, so I know he's not working, working, and I might have to just... Uh, beg and borrow from someone's help, Chuck, um, <laughs> for additional help in moving the, uh, the tarp. I'll send someone week. over. Okay. So anyways, someone I'm looking forward to Children's Week, and I want to do the, you know, the movie should be fun, and I, I want to definitely get that in. So, great. Thank you. John, do you have any information on the water safety uh, oh. presentation? Um, yeah, the water safety, thank you, that actually is two things. Water safety was great. Uh, it was new this year. Uh, we didn't know what to expect. The uh, Coast Guard showed up there with a little, um, uh, a little movable machine that talked and ran. It was called Coasty, and it would talk to the kids. That was great. The uh, fishing gang came down and talked about, you know, fishing, what, what the limits are, where to go, how to do that. Uh, the Coast Guard came down with their big inflatable and, you know, could talk to the kids and had, had giveaways. Um, the, um, I'm not, I forget, the, the United States Lifeguard Association came down and, and they had a booth. The, um, the mammal um, people came down, I see, see mammal or whatever came down, and they were able to talk about seals and how not to touch them and, and plastics and what go on. So it was, it was very educational. Um, the um, Cinnamon Rainbow came down. I want to thank them. They came down and just kind of talked about water safety and surfing because, you know, we don't have it at the main beach, but it is a big component up on North Beach by the wall. So Cinnamon Rainbow came down. They did a great thing. And then the, uh, the lifeguards put on displays all day long. They, the first thing they had was how to what they do when someone's out in the water. And they had four or five, um, they just, yeah, three guys and two girls with their torpedoes. Other lifeguards went way out in the water, and these guys swam out and showed how to pull someone in. Then they did a jet ski saving, and then they let the little kids do it, and then they did the old rope line. So um, it, was, it was a great event all, um, and they're going to grow upon that. Um, at this, thank you, because I, I want to also mention and give congratulations to, you know, um, the Hampton Beach Ocean, Ocean Rescue. 
Um, they won the New Englands again this year, second year in a row. So hats off to Jimmy Dunnie and uh, his guys and women. Is it going to be an annual event? Do you know? Yes. Great. Yeah. And, and they're good. You know, we learned. It was a first. So um, we'll, we can push it a little bit more and find out what the kids liked. And, but it was very informative and uh, very well staged. Thank you. Thanks, John. All right. Any other public comment? On that, seeing that there's none, we're going to close the meeting at no closing comments. Bob? No, no closing. Maureen? No. Close the meeting at 635. Thank you.